Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. What the CNN activist just said is going viral for all the wrong reasons. This will ruin them. Simone Sanders recently went to protest the fact that Colin Kaepernick is still unemployed. She is protesting the fact that Kaepernick is a symbol for black pride. Simone Sanders once said, It is extremely important that I keep the bar high and substantive. What happened? When Simone Sanders exited the Bernie Sanders campaign she said she was proud of the work she had done for Bernie. She came on with the campaign after Bernie Sanders was feeling heat from the black community the result of Black Lives Matter public attacks on the candidate popular with young voters. Sanders' job was to bridge the gap between BLM and the Sanders campaign by using her ethnicity to wash away their concerns. To many, namely CNN, she was a successful pawn. CNN soon became the next employer to extend a racially tokenizing olive branch to Simone Sanders and she was happy to accept. Sanders lacks a subject of particular expertise that usually comes with being a political panelist. You'd be hard-pressed to see Simone Sanders appearing on CNN spouting statistics or pointing to facts. Instead, her favorite rhetorical devices are shouting racist and interrupting guests before they give their opinion. Virginia Attorney General Ken Cousinley recently received some flack for imploring Sanders to shut up for a minute and let him finish after he was interrupted by Sanders yet again this time for not speaking to the hard regarding violence in Charlottesville. This is the role Simone Sanders plays and she revels in it. She fans the flames of racial tension by taking the illogical emotional perspective on just about every CNN panel. Paris Denard a black Republican strategist and regular guest on CNN found himself in yet another screaming match with Sanders recently after exposing her for double talk on the question of whether she thinks President Donald Trump is a white supremacist. After Denard referenced comments Sanders made in the green room indicating she didn't think President Trump was racist she said on air in response to the same question I don't know what's in his heart, which infuriated Denard. She went on to argue that Trump traffics in bigotry and racism a statement understood by no one not even Sanders. It's unclear when Sanders decided to devote her life to being used as a pawn and scheme to sensationalize racial tensions in America but it's clear that Sanders' antics are becoming increasingly cringy. She was cornered by Oma Rosa at a National Association of Black Journalists event for perpetually playing the race card against the White House but don't expect that to stop Sanders. There is an economy of race baiting and Sanders is one of its top profiteers. She claims to operate as a DNC strategist but her only strategy seems to be crying racism from a mountain at her every opportunity. She oddly emceed a rally in New York City that served as a protest outside NFL headquarters for second-string QB Colin Kaepernick's inability to find a team willing to sign him. Where is the strategy in singing a swan song for Colin Kaepernick? The answer is simple. The playbook from Democrats continues to be touting the narrative that they are the champion of minorities. Instead of actually engaging in strategies to go about this in productive ways such as increasing black employment something that has happened under Trump's administration, Democrats remain happy focusing on tokenizing gestures. Such agendas like finding Colin Kaepernick a job and removing Confederate statues aren't going to make life materially better for black Americans. Simone Sanders knows as much is true, but when your job is peddling unsubstantiated claims of racism you must play your role. Simone Sanders does it well. Share this if you are tired of these race baiters in the Democratic Party. Roger Stone just said the one terrifying thing Trump must do to drain McCain and Flake and Corker. Roger Stone, a longtime friend of the president's, just said what he needs to do to drain the swamp. And it's terrifying. Most members of Congress are arrogant, and until a scalp is actually taken, they are going to continue to be defiant. He told The Hill. All he needs to do is punish one incumbent, and I think you'd see a seat change. That's right. 
he said at dot scalp. I can hear it now, can't you? He referred to scalping, a Native American method used in warfare. I'm just waiting for the liberals to start protesting how Trump's allies are somehow making fun of Native Americans. And of course, that will mean that Trump is making fun of Native Americans. Of course, I just dot but they won't be. In the meantime, what Stone was saying is that he must continue to stand up to members of Congress who aren't doing their jobs. He should continue his aggressive stance and not back down. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said on Friday, I think it's clear that the end game is for Congress to do its job and actually pass legislation. I think the American people are very frustrated with Congress's lack of action, she said. For years, they've been all talk and no action. I don't expect to see Trump backing down to anyone anytime soon, do you? I see him taking a few scalps if our so-called representatives don't start doing their jobs and representing those who put them there. We put them there, and we can take them out, too. If you agree with Stone, please share this everywhere and comment scalp them. H. T. The Hill Liberal media calls man a white supremacist for saving the life of a rabbit. A video went viral of a man saving a rabbit from the California wildfires. It was a nice display of humanity. However, according to the black centered liberal website The Root, the video was an act of white supremacy. Damon Young of The Root wrote an article called The Video of the Man Saving the Rabbit from the Fire Captures Everything Wrong with Whiteness in 30 Seconds. This man was basically Jesus saving the bunny from eternal damnation. And when you see a video of Jesus snatching a bunny from the devil's grasp, the least you could do is share it on your timeline with a hearts emoji. It's also maybe the whitest thing I've ever seen, writes Young. And these eyes have seen the pinnacles of whiteness, including a pretzel and pepperoni casserole at a holiday potluck when I was a teacher and the peak Appalachian tailgates outside of Heinz Field whenever Kenny Chesney is in town. But not only is it the whitest thing I've ever seen this week, it manages to synopsize everything problematic about white people on both a macro and micro level in 30 seconds. This clip does such a great job of articulating whiteness that it should win a MacArthur Genius Grant, writes Young. Young goes on to compare black people with rabbits. But let's forget about the big picture issues for a moment. Instead, let's focus on the actual act. It was brave. It was fearless. It was valiant. It was altruistic. It was everything good about humanity. But when witnessing the act and the fawning over the bunny rescue, I can't help juxtaposing the feelings expressed about this bunny with the feelings generally expressed when black people are in grave danger, he writes. Does this seem too stupid to believe? How many more people have to die? Michelle Malkin crushes Democrats for supporting insane policy. Conservative commentator Michelle Malkin went after Democrats in a brutal rant for failing to repeal the diversity visa lottery program. There are millions of people around the world who are clamoring to get in here the right way and the fact that we still do it randomly tells you how much insanity, politically incorrect sanity, has set in, argued Malkin. I mean, it was just seven weeks ago with the drug jihadist who also got in here through the diversity visa lottery and also benefited from the chain migration insanity that we had people saying oh yeah, we've got to get rid of it. We've got to get rid of it. And I'm so exasperated my friends because I've been calling for the end of this program for the last 15 years, said Malkin. We should value citizenship and entry into this country much more than we have been and both parties have shrugged their shoulders. There have been legislative bills stand-to-loan bills, to eliminate the diversity visa program for the last 15 years. They've gathered dust, argued Malkin. The SAFE Act, before the House Judiciary Committee in 2011, just sat there doing nothing. We've got the RAISE Act, which is co-sponsored by Tom Cotton and David Perdue, which would have eliminated the visa lottery program. It's been gathering dust. 
how many more people have to die or be threatened before we get rid of this stupidity? She said. Do you think she's right? Something very sad just happened to Oma Rosa Manigault, and CNN is celebrating. Oprah's star and White House official Oma Rosa Manigault was a fan favorite after she trashed Joy Behar on The View, but unfortunately, she is now out of the White House. Oma Rosa Manigault Newman resigned yesterday to pursue other opportunities. Her departure will not be effective until January 2018. We wish her the best in future endeavors and are grateful for her service," wrote Sarah Huckabee Sanders in a statement. The media immediately celebrated her being fired. CNN political commentator Angela Rye targeted Oma Rosa for being a black woman. Brooke, I'm going to do what you can't do, and what April and Simone are too good of people to do and that's just be petty for a minute. Bye girl. Bye. We did it already on the podcast, April. Bye. Honey, you have never represented the community. You are skin folk. We don't own you like Zara. Goodbye. Good riddance. Goodbye. Deuces, shouted Rye on CNN. Urban radio host April Ryan immediately spread rumors that she was fired. Sources say General Kelly did the firing and Elma Rosa is alleged to have acted very vulgar and cursed a lot and said she helped elect President Trump. The word is a General Kelly had it and got rid of her tweeted Ryan. According to multiple sources Oma Rosa did not resign. She was even escorted out of He Building and off campus, tweeted Ryan.